ago, somebody wrote a letter that was published in the Winnipeg Free Press and it said that Christianity had changed through the centuries to adapt itself to whatever culture it was in and that present day Christianity was a very different religion than they had in Jesus' day. That, of course, is an example of the silly statements made by people who think they know more than they really know. The fact is that any honest person today can find expressions of Christianity that are remarkably true to the New Testament. Yes, there are vast areas of Christendom that have moved far, far away from original Christianity. The Bible said that that would happen in the last days, perilous times would come. Perhaps nothing has changed so much as how contemporary society views sin. One famous psychiatrist has written a book entitled Whatever Became of Sin? A $64,000 question. If you know anything about the Bible, you will know that it is all about sin, its origins, its pervasiveness, its consequences, its cost to God and to men, and its divine answer in the appearance of Jesus Christ and in his atoning death on Calvary's cross. Well, what does the word sin mean to the average citizen today? If adultery is nothing more than recreational sex, and if abortion is every woman's right, and if homosexuality is a legitimate lifestyle, and if, if everyone has a right to doctor-assisted death, and if, as one British cleric put it, the, the average person today can put out of his mind every thought of a future judgment day, if, if those things are true, then, then what is sin? Is it just a slip backwards in the inevitable climb upward? Is it imperfect good? Is it a throwback to our animal ancestors? What is sin? And how serious is it? In Canada today, we have decided that nobody is to blame for anything. We have discovered new words to use. Sickness, we use that for sin. Weakness, we use for the Bible word abomination. Freedom, we use that word for defiance of God. And we have found new people to blame. Parents and teachers and preachers and governments and the environment, especially the environment, the prejudices of our grandparents. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps we need to forget everything that the news media have, have told us and go back to discover what the wisdom of the ages said and what Jesus taught us about sin. Sin is the transgression of the law. He who knows to do right and doesn't do it, to him it is sin. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The wages of sin is death. Without the shedding of blood is no remission of sin. That which is not of faith is sin. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin and righteousness and judgment to come. And those are just a few quotations Perhaps the reason why the Bible is the one book that you must not read in Canadian schools today. And perhaps that's the reason why so many pulpits explain the Bible away. The word Christian means to be a follower of Christ. Are you a follower of Christ? If then, we need to listen to what Jesus taught us about sin, first of all. He taught us that all sin is against God. The Pharisees had it right when they said, no one can forgive sins but God alone. All sins belong to God, and every man shall give account of himself to God. Secondly, Jesus taught us that we do wrong because our hearts are wrong. He said that out of the heart of man proceedeth the uh, adulteries and fornications and all manners of manner of evil we do wrong because we are wrong that's why we need to be born again thirdly Jesus told us 
But sin is defiance of the two great commandments, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and strength, and the second commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Self-love, self-reliance, leaving God out, these are the root causes of our trouble. Fourthly, Jesus told us that only one sin is unpardonable the sin of resisting the Holy Spirit. Fifthly, he told us that to whom much is given from him, much shall be required. There are degrees of responsibility and degrees of punishment. It will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for Capernaum. It will be more tolerable for a Sri Lankan tribesman than for a University of Toronto PhD on the day of judgment. Sixthly, Jesus taught us that being right with your neighbor does not mean that you are right with God. The rich young ruler had kept all of the rules regarding his obligations to his neighbors, but he went away sorrowful because he hadn't honored God. His gold was his God. And then Jesus said that the one that no one can sit on the fence, that a servant who hid his talent in the land in the ground was called a wicked servant. The one you, thing you cannot do is be neutral. Either Jesus is Lord or of all, or he is not Lord at all. And in the eighth place, Jesus t told us that heaven rejoices when one sinner repents. In the city of gold, that's big news. Fox News and CBC have it all wrong. They would tell you that the, the, the football score is the most important thing today. The most important thing in the world is when somebody sheds tears of repentance and comes to the cross and receives Jesus Christ as Savior. That's our Savior's message. And then in John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said that Satan is a liar who comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but he is the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep, and we have abundant life through him. Jesus insisted that on Calvary, his blood was shed for the remission of sins in the upper room, talking to his disciples and instituting the Last Supper. He's talked about the blood that would, was shed for the sins of the whole world. At the Jordan, John the Baptist called Jesus the Lamb of God that would take away the sins of the world. Oh, there was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven and let us in. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And finally, Jesus taught us that the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment to come. What is sin? It's saying no to God. Sin is doing it my way. Sin is trusting in your own abilities, your own merits, your own efforts. Sin is refusal to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and to accept his offer of eternal life. Long ago, Gabriel told Joseph, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Have you been saved from your sins? Not in your sins, but from your sins. Have you been saved? If not, come to Christ today. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6.